Okay, before we start this video, entertain me for just a second. First, I need to make it clear that I really, really love Frontrunner products. If you watch any of the videos I have on my channel, I have a ton of Frontrunner installs and reviews on there because I have always loved purchasing their products and all the stuff that I've ever gotten from them is high quality. None of the videos I created with Frontrunner products are sponsored, by the way. Now, this past May, I bought the Frontrunner Slim Sport Roof Rack for my wife's Forerunner. I was planning on installing it and giving it to her as a Mother's Day present. Now when I got the rack however there were a ton of issues. The main one being that the packaging was just completely destroyed. There was hardware spilled everywhere. A lot of hardware that was missing because of that. I had to go to the hardware store to purchase additional hardware. Some of them the hardware store doesn't even carry and I had to hit front runner up for it. And then there was also parts in there that had nothing to do with the roof rack. So of course I contacted front runner. They sent me the missing bolts except the bolts they sent me were not even the right parts. So I had to contact them again and get that again but yet I launched the video anyway because I wanted to be honest in what I was receiving. Then somehow or the other that video garnered some attention. A lot of people started chiming in sharing their experiences with front runner stuff being delivered to them and hardware being everywhere and to my surprise I started seeing front runner get on that video and start answering everyone's questions or apologizing for things like that happening and they were actually taking an active role in making sure that they heard everyone's voices. And then they scheduled a call with me and I ended up talking to the Frontrunner USA CEO and I was almost afraid they were going to tell me to take the video down but they didn't. They actually were calling to apologize and they were saying that that is not the level of service that is expected at Frontrunner and they were very saddened by the experiences that people were having and it actually caused an internal dialogue within the company to resolve those issues. And I really appreciated that because look, there are a ton of overlanding companies out there and sometimes when a company gets too big, the level of service or the level of quality in their products starts to degrade because now they're trying to meet a huge demand. And then some just don't even care like, hey, we don't care. We're getting business anyway. So for a very well-known company like Frontrunner to take the time to actually listen to what people were saying in my video, that is a huge thing. And that is something that we should not overlook. I'm not here to try to boost them up, all right? Like I'm not being paid to say this. I am saying this because the fact that they called me and wanting to make things right and wanting to apologize, that says a lot. And any company that is willing to listen to their customers and not only listen, but do whatever they can to learn from their mistakes and prevent it from happening again, you're gonna get my business. You're gonna get my business because that's the level of integrity and professionalism that I expect in myself. Frontrunner has no idea that I'm talking about this in a video. In fact, regarding my other video, despite that it didn't paint them in the best light, they said they were very thankful that I posted it because they keep a log at the company and every time a complaint comes in, they jot it down, like every single one. And when a certain complaint reaches a certain amount and number of times that it's happening, they make sure to address it. And I don't want you guys to start thinking, Oh, now that they contacted Asia, Asia is all about Front Runner, even if Front Runner did him wrong. Uh, no, I have always been into Front Runner products and my channel shows that. They made one mistake. They made one mistake out of all the orders I've ever made with them, and yet they contacted me just because of that one mistake to make it right. I have always loved the quality of their products, I've always loved how they package things. And now I like them even more because they're willing to correct the one time that they messed up. And to me, that's worth my business. Okay, rant over, let's move on to the video. So during this phone call with Frontrunner, by the way, you should know, I wasn't expecting to get anything for free. Like that's not what the phone call was about. I was just really glad they were calling to apologize. But during this phone call, we were just kind of chopping it up and uh, they said that they watched some of my videos and that they really liked the quality of them. And I had pointed them to my DIY under the roof rack table rail system. It's basically the system that they sell that I was trying to emulate in a DIY form because the kit that they sell, the table along with the rails, it runs about seven to 800 bucks, which is a lot of money. And I knew that maybe one day I'll get it, but that was one of those things that, uh, forking up 700 bucks for a camp table 
seems really excessive right now. So they watched the video and they said, this is actually not bad. You kind of engineered this pretty close to the way we have it. Mind you, I have never seen their system in person. So I didn't know how their mechanism works. I was just trying to figure out a way to make mine work. And I told them that, yeah, except mine kind of sucks. Like it doesn't work as well. Like the table doesn't slide in as smoothly. And also I couldn't figure out what kind of leg system I'm gonna put on it without it swinging down and hitting the top of my roof. And then they said, you know what? We'll alleviate your headache. I'll go ahead and send you a table kit. And uh, yeah. Like, are you serious right now? Like that's exactly what I said to them because I couldn't believe they were willing to send me one. And they said, you know, it's the least we can do. Then a couple weeks later, this table comes in and I'm looking at this thing going, wow. This is a nice table. Like you can see exactly why it has the premium price tag that it does. So let me walk you through it. Let me show you the table. Let me show you the rail system. We'll get this thing installed and uh, yeah, I'm super amped. Now, first up is the table. Actually, this is not a good idea. The table, this is a premium table. Like you will be paying premium price for a table like this. It's not in a lot of people's budgets, I can tell you that. I mean, it wasn't in my budget, at least not for a long time. So I'm very thankful that they were able to send this to me. Look, at the end of the day, you can go to your Costco or to your Walmart or to your Bass Pro Shop or Sporting Goods Store and buy a camp table. But what I like about this table is that it's super slim and can fit underneath my roof rack and I don't have to take up any space in the back because before I would take those camp tables, those plastic white ones that unfold. They just took up too much room and it got way too bulky for me that I stopped taking them out. Now I can bring this table every single time and I can use it every single time versus opting to leave it at home because it's just too bulky. Like this won't take up any space in my rear area at all. I really just said space in my rear area. Now, as you can see, the wrapping is still on this. They wanna make sure they protect what's underneath, which is like restaurant grade aluminum, like the kinds they use in commercial kitchens, that's the kind of aluminum they use under here. So you'll know that it's gonna take a beating. Now on the back side, you can kind of see how that aluminum looks like. It's like this thing is crafted well. And then you got these legs here. These just raise up be able to lock in place I believe right here both sides and there you go my only concern and I don't know I haven't been able to test this yet is will this stay like this it feels like it like I can't just move it right like it seems like it's locked in there but what I don't want is to start hitting the trails and if it gets loose over time this thing will kind of flop in you know and hit and bang the top of my roof all right i'm going to stop you right there because you're about a few hours shy from learning something really important fast forward the video okay see those platforms on those rails those platforms are there because those are what keep the legs from swinging down they hold the legs in place yeah problem solved now looking at it like at eye level, you'll be able to see that on the sides, it kind of slopes like this and then you have this lip. That's what allows it to kind of stay guided on those rails as you push it through, which is something that I did not have in my DIY. It was just these uh, these U-channels. I would just slide the table in and it got a little wonky, but that's not gonna happen here. Even all the bolts uh, that are on this thing is sunk in, which is again, something that I didn't have in my DIY. It's crazy that I know what I'm looking for now because I attempted to DIY this thing and I was doing it blindly, never having seen this table at all. And obviously I was running into a lot of problems that needed to be solved. And seeing this table now, I'm seeing how they engineered it to solve those issues that I was having. So it's pretty cool. This thing is gonna get a lot of use and it's gonna stay in my family for a really, really long time. Now, obviously you can buy the table by itself. However, if you have a roof rack, more specifically like a T-slot system type of roof rack, then you can opt to get the table kit. I purposely did not take everything out of the box because I wanted to show you the level of packing that I am accustomed to when it comes to front runner. This is how I usually get my stuff. It's nicely organized, everything like that. And I've always gotten it this way, except for that one time that we already discussed in the beginning. Now in here, first thing is they always put a card in there showing you who inspected the box and making sure that everything was packed properly. Got your bag of hardware not spilled out all over the place. And in that, there's another card in there too for whoever inspected that. 
instructions. Then we got the table latch system. That's everything that we need to lock the table in place. Now, these are the rails and I'm laughing because this is way more engineered than the DIY system that I tried to do a couple of months ago. I mean, look at this. This is what I made, but it's actually close. But this is made with aluminum, so you know that it's not gonna rust out on you. And you have these slots here at the top that will basically go on any kind of T-slot system you have. If you don't have a front runner roof rack, then you'll just have to try to measure out which of these slots will work for you. You basically just you know, put a bolt into your T-rails and then it, you snug it into there and then tighten it with a nut underneath and that'll lock it down. But if you have a front runner uh, roof rack, then these uh, certain ones are already made and lined up specifically to your roof rack. And then coming at it from the front, so you'll see you have kind of three levels here. You have the one that goes against your roof rack like that and then the table actually contours to here and then it drops down here to make room for where the legs tuck in so that's why it's like this you know this is very very uh engineered right like you have these divots here so that to make sure that this thing doesn't start to bend down after a while like that's the thing that i was having an issue with in my diy was that anything that was holding it it kind of bent a little bit the table looked like it was about to fall but this is done so that it will hold that table and what i also really like is that they put like this felt along here and then here and here so when you're sliding your table in you're not going to be scratching your table up in fact in their hardware kit they even give you this rubber trim that you would cut to go along the edge of your roof rack so that when you're sliding the table in and out, you're kind of protecting it from getting dinged up. Now for the table latch system, I actually haven't even opened this yet. Oh look, there's a card in there too, showing who inspected it. This is your table latch and it basically goes on the lip uh, of your roof rack and that's what holds the table in place. And if you press this button here, this thing lifts up like that. And that's how you're able to get the table out. And then when you're ready, you just put this back in if I'm not mistaken it'll go yeah see and then you have this little uh, uh, loop in here so that you can put a padlock and so no one can steal your table the only challenge that I know I'm gonna be grumbling about that's why I'm not gonna say this thing is gonna be easy they recommend you remove the rack turn it upside down install this then put the rack back on well I can't necessarily do that because I got wires going in and out of the thing. I've got stuff mounted to it. I got a rooftop tent on top. That's going to make this a little bit difficult. If I didn't have a rooftop tent, then this could be easier because I can kind of reach underneath. I'm not going to be able to do that either because there's also wires going to the rooftop. tent. Yeah, there's a lot going on on my roof rack. So it might just be a challenge trying to get this underneath and mounted up. I'm just saying, I don't know if you're religious, but just pray for me. Since I'll be mounting the rails underneath my roof rack with the rooftop tent making accessibility limited, I went ahead and started to thread the nuts onto the bolts so I don't have to try and blindly maneuver it on later. Next I slid the table rails underneath and got them somewhat in position, then slid two bolts on each side into the T-rails. The instructions say to use the second and fourth slats counting from the back of the roof rack. With the bolts in place, I slid the slots of the table rails onto the bolts, then tightened the bolts just enough to keep the rails from sliding off, but loose enough to still maneuver. I then did a quick measurement to make sure the slats are 750 millimeters apart as that is the width of the table. From here, it's just a matter of adjusting and readjusting. From the side of the roof rack, I measured to make sure the table rails were parallel to each other and the size of my roof rack. I also wanted to make sure that the table would be sitting dead center of the roof rack. Once I established that, I could then tighten one of the table rails so that I just needed to adjust the other side. Once everything was in place, I tightened up the bolts and added the rubber caps. To install the table latch, I removed the corner caps of my roof rack and then slid a nut in and dragged it to the middle. From there I attached the latch and kept making numerous attempts to thread the bolt through the nut inside. Tightening the bolt from above proved difficult because my rooftop tent prevented me from using a regular allen key, so instead I used a small hex bit and a wrench to turn it. But 
Then finally I took the rubber strip included in the kit and covered the bottom T-rail of the lip of the roof rack. This just ensures that when your table is locked into position, it won't bang or scratch your roof rack and vice versa. This worries me because this install went a lot smoother and easier than I expected it to be. Like I feel like I used up all my easy install points on this one and then my next installs after this is going to make me want to pull my hair out. Like you have to understand that when I installed this DIY version, this was such a pain in the butt to mount underneath the roof rack. Like not only did I have limited access, but trying to get this under there without it kind of turning like this and then the table's coming out crooked and it wouldn't slide. But theirs was so well built and it was just so chunky that you put it underneath there it's not going to bend on you and you can basically maneuver it until it fits in fact the hardest part about this install was installing that table latch and the only reason why that was difficult was because my rooftop tent that's sitting on top has these rails that kind of cross over the one of the t-channels so i could not just mount this latch like at the edge where I can see it clearly and then slide it over into the middle. I actually really like that latch system because as soon as you slide the table underneath and you latch it down, man, that thing is so secure. It, it, I mean, it's great, this whole system, even the table coming out and putting it back in, it just rides so smoothly. With this thing, I had to try to aim my table and get it into the T-channels and then kind of wriggle it in there. And this one, you just kind of pop it in and it just slides right in and slides right back out. I will say though that because I had limited access to underneath my roof rack due to the rooftop tent being there, shout out to the people with the skinny wrists and small hands that can reach into places. It did take longer than it needed to and it didn't even take that long. So I can only imagine how much faster this would have gone had I not had a rooftop tent. If you have the ability to remove your rack off the brackets that it's sitting on, do that. Remove the rack, bring it inside, turn it over, put the table there, get the rails in place, line it all up that way, tighten it all down, and then put the rack back on. That would be the easiest way because you can see everything and make sure everything is lined up. Otherwise, there's not much else I have to say. I mean, it's a camp table and a table is gonna table. But man, the quality, not just the table, but even the rails, like everything was just built so cleanly and nicely. You're gonna see more of this table a lot in all of my new videos because I'm basically going to be using this every time we go to camp. And I know it's a camp table, like whatever, but there's something to be said about something that's so high quality that you know it's going to last you for a while. And not only that, it has a system that allows me to tuck it underneath my roof rack and I don't have to worry about trying to store it and find room for it inside the vehicle. Like that's the thing about tables is that we need like a big space at camp, but we don't want to have to be lugging some huge thing around all the time. I have done everything I can to the vehicle to have pull out tables and pull out drawers and surface area without having to bring a big table. 
and this just fits that system so perfectly. Also, spoiler alert, Frontrunner is sending me some other stuff as well that we're going to be mounting to the Forerunner, so I'm really, really excited about that. So make sure you stay tuned and watch those videos, but if you did like this video, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. Seriously, this table is so nice. It makes me want to do one of those romantic movie scenes where I just like throw everything off the table and then I grab my wife and we just admire it.